Uh, we want to talk about the boards, what they've done in the last few years to increase the boards and how to make them more efficient and um, a lot easier to work and a lot easier to run, plus some of the gear we brought down there that we use when we're out on the trail. So I'll let Jerry uh, take over because I'm about ready to lose the kid. Uh, the original boards, I don't know if you guys have seen them there. I'm sure a bunch of you guys have. The yellow boards are just about everywhere. We go everywhere in the country and everybody runs these boards. Even though we're in Europe, they run these boards. So it's not just here in uh, Michigan, uh, you know, Lake Erie, or uh, Saginaw Bay. But uh, the upgrades they made about maybe eight, nine years ago was the uh, Tattletail flags. And all it is is an upgrade kit to the normal orange uh, yellow board. And that just is a spring loaded board. And when this, when this came out, we uh, know the owner, Bruce, of the Shana really well, and he kept talking about this uh, spring-loaded board and wouldn't give them up to anybody. So we went and designed our own just to try them out and see how they worked. And the first tournament we used them, uh, we won. And it was a state championship, so it was like a $10,000 payday. So it was pretty good for me spending, you know, $20 trying to you know, upgrade our boards a little bit. Uh, what, the board, what these boards do, not only do these boards take your baits out to the side, but uh, for years and years and years, us included, especially if you don't from here, Lake St. Clair, we thought all the walleyes were on the bottom. Now we know there's some suspended fish a few different places down Lake Erie and stuff, but still, what do we do? We go out to the bottom of the ground, put it on the bottom, put it around here. Well, we figured out that like, you know, 90% of the walleyes aren't on the bottom. <laughs> so we were fishing where the walleyes were for years and years and years. And uh, even today, I think uh, in the last couple of years, the fish have actually gone higher than most people would ever fish. Uh, the tournament we fished in July in Saginaw Bay, we were fishing 20 feet back with a one ounce weight in 50 feet of water, catching 40, 50 fish a day. And you can't see those fish on your electronics. And I love guys going, man, there's no fish here. But you know, as the boat goes across those fish, the fish can feel that boat goes to the water and they will spread out to the side. So you actually have to fish. You just can't drive around looking for them. I know a lot of the pros are like, hey, you know, you see fish to catch them. That's great if they're so far underneath your boat. But if they're up high, you'll never see them. So you have to fish where you where you, you've caught them before and use the same tactics. I mean, these walleyes are great because they don't go back to the same spot, they'll run the same gauntlet and be in the same area year after year after year. We have it all logged down. He'll go back to the spot he fished two years ago and set up and fish the same spinners and the same distance back and the same water temperature and start catching fish. And everything changed we started running those super, super high with the boards. Now another thing these boards do great is they fish weeds really well. And we figured this out, terrible, that was in uh, Escanaba. We had weeds that came almost to the surface. And I was fishing a break out in like 20 feet of water and the wind pushed me into the weeds. And when the board started going into the weeds, everything went back. And I thought it was just hung up. But I had two walleyes on and two, you know, two of them hung up the weeds. So, and they were big fish, a lot of big fish were in the weeds. And it's the same kind of thing. We were only in about maybe eight, 10 feet of water and the water was pretty clear. So as the bolt would go by, the fish would spook out and you basically just push them right to your boards. Everything pushes right to them. Now we'll share our gear that we use. We use pretty heavy tackle. My dad uses eight and a half foot rods. I use nine, I like a little bit more of a river rod. Pretty heavy. Uh, we don't we don't run a lot of fire line. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, I think uh, you lose too many fish, too many head shakes, and the walleyes start shaking their heads, especially the big ones do those big head shakes, and they'll just open that mouth right up and those things come right out. So we run 99% of the time we're gonna run on a filament. And we don't run a light line. Never seen a walleye uh, really line shine, otherwise they never get caught in a kill that. So we run 14, because uh, especially you use a lot of boards, the clips will wear on the line a little bit. So we run a 14 pound, uh, I know a lot of the charts show 10 pound, but the charts are just a guide about where you should be fishing, where you think your lure is. It's just kind of a, a guess where it's going to be close, because uh, there's, there's so much speed dependent. So uh, we run a little bit heavier lines. Uh, if I do look at big fish, 
And if I got my dad in the bowl, I'm not worried about it. But if I got an amateur partner in the bowl, who's never seen a wall out for four pounds in his life, and that 10 pounder comes up, who would believe uh, the guys just freak out? They've never seen stuff like this here around here. So. This is a, a dad fished the tournament, a uh, master walleye circuit down in uh, St. Dusty last year. And then he ended up catching the biggest fish. It was 11 or almost 11. He just rolled 11, 11, 6. Yeah. 11, 6. Pretty nice fish. Uh, fish to pause. And a lot of you guys, I don't know, if, this is more of a sag on bay lure for a lot of years. And uh, when they first came out, we used to run them a lot, then we kind of got away from it. And we have probably boxes and boxes of them. All this is is a little weighted uh, diving. It basically is like a little diving mix, but it wiggles back and forth and has a little spinner on it. So it kind of takes the spinner now. And we run spinners behind it. Now we don't, uh, we tie all of our spinners ourselves. This is a Saginaw Bay or uh, Lake Erie spinner. You see it's two, two treble hooks. We only run single hooks if we're running uh, in weeds or running in uh, rivers. Most of our Great Lake stuff is all treble hooks. We can't really buy a good treble hook spinner set up, so we tie them all ourselves. These are all scaled in line. And we carry boxes and boxes of beads. And lots and lots of plastic crevices you can snap these blades in and out. This must have been a good one because you got it out of metal clip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you don't want to lose them, <laughs> put a metal clip on them. <laughs> now there's, there's charts for all these. Uh, the trolling guide by our friends uh, Mark Romanak and uh, Dr. Holt uh, have dive curves for all this. This is some, that's some, some great stuff. I said they call it the Bible. It gives you an idea of what's going on. The best thing they ever came out with was those line counters. When we first started tournament fishing, they didn't have line counters. And what they, I think they might have had a few of them. They were really very expensive or they were really the crap. Now that's all we use. I think we have line counters on everything. I even wore fishing bounces off the back of the boat. I don't want to make sure my amateur partner doesn't have 200 feet of line out and I'm only running 50. So it's like, what depth are you? You know, what's your line out? What's your line out? You can tell them, hey, go back 60 feet and then put it down. So everybody can understand 60 feet. A lot of guys can't understand putting that bouncer on the bottom and dragging it along. That's one of our specialties here in Michigan. But uh, and it's all about being controlling where your lures are all at the same time. I want to know exactly where my bait's at, exactly how many feet are back, and I have a pencil and a pad. I'm getting older, not quite as old as some of the guys I fish against, but uh, you can't remember how far back. So we write everything down. If I'm going to go back 50 feet, I'm catching the fish back 50 feet, I want to know it's 50. Press it down, fish, you run six rods. It's even more hard to keep track of where your lines are. Because inevitably, I'll bump, I'll bump the rod and then I'll clear it off. And then you're trying to figure out where you're winding the fish and how much line you got. So, but uh, definitely a great thing to come up with these line counters. Now, the boars. Three boards on each side is kind of hard. It's pretty tough to run. We run them different than most guys. Everyone always shows you know, you put the you put the outside rod all the way out, put the rod up front. The next size, the next rod is going to be in the middle, and the closest one is going to be off the back. We do it opposite. Apparently, we need to read the magazine or get the memo on how to run those because if you hook a fish on the outside, it'll always pull into the inside rod. And you always got to take them up. We're going to bring the other rods in to clear if you had a big fish. What we do, we run our outside rod on our back rod holder. So our boards don't go straight out the side of the boat. They're out in the back. So my furthest board is going to be down and back, not out. My inside one is going to be, my rod is going to be in the middle of the boat, so it's going to be up farther, and my closest board the rod is going to be even farther out. So when that outside fish hits, by the time you pick the rod up, let it swing back, it clears all the lines. I don't know where it came up with the other way, but wrong. Yeah, never, never could figure that out. And when you do that, you don't hang up your other rods. And then all we do is if I catch a fish on the outside, fight that fish in, I take my other rod and move it to the back rod or hit the clicker, let it walk out. We just keep rotating them around. We've been doing that forever. And then someone told us, uh, one of the big pros, like parsers, is going, hey, you guys run your rods, your boards backwards. We're like, we got to know there wasn't a right way or a wrong way. But we kept hanging up so much, fishing it that way, that uh, you know, we, we switched up. So. I think a bunch of other guys are doing it too. They switched up too. Because 
funny, we get a new guy in the boat and runs the other way, he'll always grab the wrong rod. <laughs> so it's always, we always laugh like that when you get the wrong rod. <laughs> That's the uh, only, the, I think the toughest part about fishing boards and fishing in uh, suspended fish is going to be so many people have a real hard time, and I know it, it's worthy in the same boat, is to go out 25 feet of water and take that spinner and go back 20 feet put the board out with a one ounce weight, or, or a snap weight. Go back 30 feet, put a one ounce snap weight, take it down 3 feet, put the board out. We won two state championships in 25 feet of water in August, and our biggest fish for three days in a row came flatline, 40 feet back without any weight. It's really hard to get into that kind of, you know, mindset that the fish are high because the bait fish are high. Anybody be down at Lake Erie in, in, this, in uh, Lake May and seeing the silver bass or the busts and stuff on the surface and big schools of shiners and seagulls and diving, all the minnows are up on the top three feet. Well, the walleyes are up there too. And inevitably, we want to take a bouncer and want to drag it down in the mud. So it's really hard to fish up high. What we do is our outside rods will be as high as the highest ones yet. So we'll go 20 feet with a one ounce on our outside board. My inside one, I'll go 25 or 30, and I'll go 35 or 40. And I'll run all one ounces. We don't change weights. I'll run all the same weight in all the rods. Because if I have to try to remember how far back I put it and what weight it was, I'll never, never be able to keep the pattern going. And your perk will never be able to Yeah, don't have a partner who can't remember how far back or what weight that was. What are you talking about me again? <laughs> <laughs> so we run all the same weights and all the rods, and we run you know, all the same rods, all the same weights, and then we just vary our distance back. It makes it really easy to try to remember where you're going to catch the fish at. See, some of these guys want to run a two on one, and a, and a three, and then a one, and they're varying the distance, and come to find out they're catching exactly the same fish on three different setups. Big change in that. We run one ounces when we're fishing anything in uh, three feet all the way to maybe 14, 15, 18 feet, and then we just, we'll go up. If I'm fishing some deeper water, 20 to 35 feet of water, we'll go two ounces. We very rarely run over two ounces. Even in 45, 50 feet of water, we can get a two ounce weight to go down pretty good. Now, a new thing they came out with uh, two years ago was these uh, diving weights. Offshore Tackle came out with this cool little diving weight. This is actually something they used over in Europe. And it's like a diving disc that it resets. And uh, Bruce did it right, he painted them all black. So we're not, we don't want the fish to eat them. We just want it to kind of sneak through the water. And uh, they come in two different sizes. And they pull really nice behind the oars. They'll go, the small one will go to 25 feet, the big one goes to 35 feet. You can run crankbaits off of them, you can run spoons off of them, you can run spinners off of them. And if the board goes back and hook the fish for a second, it comes, back, comes off, all you do is just drop the board back for a second, and it'll reset itself. It just, the little uh, snap, the diving in the part hooks up on like a little arm, and uh, when the fish catches it, it kind of drops back. It goes back to the fish, the fish comes off, you just drop the board back and then you snap right back in place. You don't have to wind it back in and try to reset it. Yeah, as soon as the fish hits, it relieves all the tension. And then uh, we were trying to figure out the dive curve. And then of course, uh, Romanac came up with his, with his tricks in, uh, in this uh, a new offshore tackle magazine that's uh, up front. I don't know if you guys picked up when you came in. It gives you the dive curves for these. So you know pretty much where you're at with these, so uh, that's really cool. We just started using them last year for the first time. Lots of fun. We want a lot of money fishing when we're fishing high. Lots and lots. But I want more money. Fishing these really long, soft rods than anything. This is a nine, isn't it? Yeah. This is your nine head. Mm -hmm. These are uh, seven weight fly rods. And I built them up for bait casting. And they're eight pound test. This is a 
two ounce sponsor, but it's on a, it's really long. I think these are 16 inches and it's on a slide. And this is a smiley, uh, smiley light. So St. Marie. <laughs> Malax, I mean, you, you can keep going all along with these things up. We started fishing these about five or six years ago. Actually, um, the company gave us a handful, you know, and the guys give us stuff you're like, some of that stuff you're like, man, it doesn't even look right. So it's through in my box, carrying it around for like two years. We're up at the Sioux, he makes one up. Been fishing for three days, caught like five fish. He catches five fish in like 15 minutes. I'm like, what the heck? So then we scrambled around trying to find them. Of course, you couldn't find them because we had to, you know, do one of those next day year things. But uh, smiley blades are just fantastic. It's a zero weighted blade. It's just a piece of plastic, so it doesn't weigh anything. It spins with almost no pressure against it, so you can be almost at a dead drift, and the spinner will spin. Spins in the wind. Yeah, it'll spin in the wind. And when it goes through the water, it has a, a vibration that's different than a spinner. A spinner has lots of thump and flash. This thing goes through the water, and you can actually feel the end of your rod vibrate. It vibrates. And the fish just attack it. Now, we've been fishing these in the middle channel, and the south channel, and uh, the snives for maybe, what, eight years, seven, eight years? And just wreck fish. Then the idea of a long rod and a light line is if you ever fish the channels up in, uh, in Algonac down through uh, by Harson Island, you got between 20 and 35 feet of water. We troll down the curve real slow with our electric, just enough to get these blades to spin. We don't even run a whole crawler on them. I might run only a half crawler. The 8 pound test line lets you get this 2 ounce bouncer on the bottom really easy. If you're running 12 or 14 pounds, you have to run a 3 ounces. And then you have to keep it a little faster to keep the 3 ounces from sticking and hanging off. Really hard. And the fish, for some reason, that 3 ounce bounce goes by to drag along in the mud. And it really scares the fish. We didn't think so, but actually we put some cameras down and we can actually see what was going on. The cameras scared them too. And uh, the real light line, real light skinny bouncer, Real soft rod. Those fish will come up and grab a spinner and just grab on it and just hold on to it real soft. Some of the best fish we've ever seen, they'll just barely bend the rod over. Just sit there on it. You'll actually see the fish just kind of vibrate the rod. When you go to hook them up, it's like hooking them out. We fished uh, Sault Ste. Marie last year for the state championship and we fished these right in the rocks and we just pulled them right across the top of the rocks. We had seven other bolts by us and I think only one bolt in three days had a limited fish, other than the two limits that we caught every day. And they were trying to run spinners in the rocks and pull down current, and the spinner is heavy, so it drags. And if you ran too much, too heavy of a bouncer, you hang up in the rocks. So the two ounces just stick across the top of the rocks, and these right light rods would just load right up. We were catching a really nice uh, three to six pound fish. Yellow was almost six pounds. So you want to have fun, you catch a six pounder on a rod that will go all the way over it. A lot of fun. Scared a lot of people there. Yeah, everybody thinks, you know, they see the rod now or the, you know, the water, they're like, man, he must have a big fish on to get up. It's like, <laughs> But uh, for fishing our channels, if you're fishing out here, uh, July, uh, end of June, when the fish float up in the channels, this is uh, the best presentation you've ever found. Fishing along uh, Gull Island or down by the firecracker or where it used to be. That whole edge there just killed the fish for these. They're just uh, fish just adapting. It's a really easy, easy setup. And it works everywhere. Uh, we fished Escanaba a couple years ago. And the water at Escanaba is crystal clear. It's fishing Lake Michigan. You can see down about 15 feet. So with the nice long nine foot rod, we were fishing nine foot liters. We are catching 20 fish an hour. And the guys next to us were fishing three ounce bouncers, and they were catching two or three fish an hour. So definitely uh, uh, finesse uh, spinner fishing at its best. 